And today, you guys are in for a treat because I brought on a very special guest. I teach uh, English and math here. Mm -hmm. My fascination with English language goes back into my childhood, and uh, it was mainly uh, sparked by my parents mm -hmm. because like they were uh, engaged in foreign languages um, my mother worked in tourism industries with most people out there mm -hmm. math is like a big puzzle right mm -hmm. it's like a giant gigantic problem it's a big yeah. headache I really want to ask you if you ever watched movies related to math the most interesting part mm -hmm. in teaching English for me is teaching reading uh, it kind of mind-blowing and uh, eye-opening sometimes for me too because you get to see different perspectives on mm -hmm. uh, on the same topic. What is it like being a mom and a full-time teacher? So mm -hmm. what would you tell, if you had a time machine and could go back in time, mm -hmm. what would you tell your 24-year-old self? Definitely, definitely. I had no idea you liked dancing. Oh, did? I do. <laughs> <Okay>. I do. <laughs> Were you telling me that uh, knowledge is nothing if you if people can't benefit from it and when your brain is not getting that oxygen mm -hmm. blood flow yeah. you're obviously going to suffocate yes right hey everyone welcome back to another episode of Adastra Muse and today you guys are in for a treat because I brought on a very special guest. And I'd like you guys to meet Ms. Marka Bo, a Hello. proud member of our Adestra team here. And uh, this lady needs no introduction. She's an amazing English teacher. On top of that, she teaches math and she brought a lot of interesting stories she'd like to share with you guys today. So I'm, I'm super pumped for this podcast. So, all right, uh, let's dive in. Ms. Marka Bo, what do you say we start with your background? Can you tell our audience a little about uh, what you do at the moment, what you do now? Okay, sure. Um, so I teach uh, English and math here at, at, at Astra. Um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, what do you say we take a step back and talk a little about your background as mm -hmm. well? Yeah. So uh, would you mind telling our audience what got you into learning English? and mm -hmm. what sparked your curiosity in math? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My fascination with English language goes back into my childhood, and uh, it was mainly uh, sparked by my parents mm -hmm. because like, they were uh, engaged in foreign languages. Um, my mother worked in tourism industry, mm -hmm. so uh, she possessed several foreign languages. And So like, how many languages could she speak? Well, uh, she knew English, her oh. major was English, and um, her second language was French. Uh -huh. And she knew a little uh, German, German, and uh, she knew Spanish a little bit. So, yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Like you come Oops. from such a linguistically diverse background. Yeah. And I'm guessing you had that language environment at home. Like, what language did you and your mom speak? No, with my mom, I used to speak Tajik, mm -hmm. but with my dad, it was Russian, and it is still Russian. Okay. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, all right, mm -hmm. uh, how about math? Like, so w w how did you get into math? Well, I was really curious about math uh, at school, and I was at the top of my class. Uh -huh. and, okay. Uh, yeah, it was just... I was good at it because I was really interested in it, I guess. And then after graduation, uh, I decided to uh, delve deeper into math mm -hmm. and study it further. And I really wanted to connect my uh, profession with math. Mm -hmm. So I took extra classes. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I got admitted to the university. Yeah. So I really wonder where that mm -hmm. interest in math uh, started. Like with most people out there, mm -hmm. math is like a big puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a giant, gigantic problem. It's a big yeah. headache. Mm -hmm. So if I'm someone who wants to get into math-related industries or pursue a job that mm -hmm. requires, uh, you know, decent level of math, mm -hmm. but I don't have that interest, 
So how do you think I, how do you, how do you, how would you suggest I develop that interest? Is there a way you can kind of, you know, get yourself interested in math? Well, or you think it, it, it has to do with your personality the, the, or do you yeah, think it has I guess to do with so. the way you're brought up? Yeah, I guess so, because my, my father was a physician, mm -hmm. mathematician, and it automatically, like, it was instilled in me, I guess, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you can't really do something, I guess, if you're not interested in it enough. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I don't see, like, why you should make yourself interested in math if you are not. Like, there are a lot of other subjects that you can learn mm -hmm. well not necessarily math well. so as someone who is currently teaching math mm -hmm. uh, assume there's a student in the classroom mm -hmm. who has zero interest in math mm -hmm. but their parents expect results uh -huh. so how do you go about this situation well i try to connect math with real world examples like i try to show the relevance to the real life Uh -huh. uh, to the student, and I guess uh, it it will help him or her uh, to get a little bit interested in the subject. I guess. Mm -hmm. So the the m most, I mean, the main point here is just to show the student that it's applicable, mm -hmm. not something like out of this world. Uh huh. Yeah. So, like, uh, would you mind giving an example of uh, the of one application of math mm -hmm. in the real world context? Uh, yeah, you can actually um, see that math is widely uh, used in engineering, in architecture, for example, especially geomet geom geometry part, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you have to calculate the volume of the figures, right? Space figures. And uh, we learn it in geometry. We learn formulas, how to calculate the ways in It's really, it, it can come handy in architecture, for example, in, in engineering, as I said earlier, yeah. Uh, but don't you think these are domain-related examples, mm -hmm. right? It, it, it's kind of uh, difficult for someone who's not inv already involved in engineering and architecture. Uh, it's really hard uh -huh. to, you know, r wrap your head around these examples. But back mm -hmm. when I was learning math, mm -hmm. I remember... My teachers was they they'd all they always give me this classical example of mm -hmm. uh, going shopping. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just <laughs> wanted to mention that example actually. Yes, yes. So yeah, they they basically tell me that uh, pretend you're at a store and shopping mm -hmm. and you you want to buy a kilo of um, mm -hmm. of apples mm -hmm. and or or a couple of kilos of apples and mm -hmm. they cost twenty. Uh, thousand sums a kilo mm -hmm. so you need to work out uh, what the total is right yeah but you know it works only with basics the basics right? yes yeah. because uh, they're gonna they're not uh, they are actually aware of the application of arithmetics uh -huh. in real life but they're gonna keep asking you like why do we need cosine and sine Right in real, uh, uh, that's in real a, that's life. That's a legit question, though, <laughs> and here's why. Because I remember when I was a university applicant, mm -hmm. I used to l learn all these concepts, calculus. Mm -hmm. But yeah. now I'm involved in uh, you know teaching English and a little bit of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and I there is there was not a single time I had to use cosine and sine. The only thing I need is simple arithmetic, like, and, and I don't even have to do uh, simple arithmetic when I got software like Excel. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> or just a calculator. Yes. So yes. how would you counteract, how, do, how would you counter these arguments if you ever had a know-it-all student like me in the class? <laughs> oh, I did. And I, I still do. I still do. Uh, my, my answer would be just it's, it helps you to, with your problem-solving skills. Um, I mean, the more difficult or challenging the problem is, mm -hmm. uh, the more your like area of your brain will um, fasten. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, yeah, it will help you to develop new neurons mm -hmm. and uh, to solve particular problems. And it doesn't have to be just uh, mathematical problems. Uh -huh. It can be real life problems. And I think that in like um, problem solving skills in, in developing problem solving skills, uh, math can really play an important part. Yeah. 
yeah. So this is the only like uh, reason I tell students just keep learning. Uh, it will help you further like in your on a, studies. On a, on a related note, I, I really want to ask you if you ever watched movies related to math. Uh, I can't recall right now. Maybe I, I did. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Because sure. with me, back mm -hmm. when I was a university applicant, mm -hmm. I remember watching a bunch of movies. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's this one called uh, um, About a Genius and starring uh, this actor, Matt Damon. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it called Bri Brilliant Mind? I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that, that's another movie, actually. So basically, there were, the, were these bunch of movies mm -hmm. I watched mm -hmm. where I saw... Uh, them flexing their math mm -hmm. it, like in public and mm -hmm. I really wanted to be like them so mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was curi curious about solving difficult questions mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, and, the, and the reason I brought this up is because I, I'd probably also try getting them my students to watch mm -hmm. movies re related to, to math and yeah. see you know geniuses you know people mm -hmm. and and how they went on to become you know successful once they learned math Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, this is uh, this is really fascinating. All this stuff. Now, uh, what do you say? You know, fast forward to your university years. Mm -hmm. Would you like to share some experiences you had, or the or the you know stories you might want to share that kind of nudged you in in this direction? Yeah, that sure. further put you down this direction. Mm -hmm. As I told you. Uh, that uh, I got admitted to the university. I, I got my bachelor's degree in uh, economics. Um, well, the reason was not necessarily because I was really interested in, in economics. It was just that, like, uh, in order to get get into this faculty, you were tested, like, two subjects, subjects like English, math, and um, Uzbek language. Well... Yeah, during my bachelor's degree, uh, we studied math, but higher mathematics and uh, economic modeling. It was really connected to math. So I was involved in math, I guess, about three years. And uh, I there, during those years, I understood that I want to uh, continue my uh, activities. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to continue to... I, I want to... Yeah, 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 keep going. Pursue a degree. <sighs> yes. And, I wanna, and then pursue a career in teaching. Yes, yes. I want to pursue my mm -hmm. uh, career in teaching math. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but English was part of my life in every stage of my life, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I see. Now, how do you compare teaching English to teaching math? And which one do you personally like? Oh, that's, I, I know that's a that's, tough question. It's yes. like asking who you, who you like better, mom or dad, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, it's. I think it's different kind of experience. With English, you have to talk a lot, mm -hmm. and you have to be like really um, guiding all the time. You have to guide through students during the whole process. But with math, it's easier, I guess, because you instruct them. You give direction, and then there you go. Like they are already solving problems by themselves, and you have some time to <laughs> check your phone. <laughs> no, not not really. <laughs> to catch your breath. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yes. And by that I mean, I, I think you mean check your phone, your social media. No, or not, not really. That's unprofessional, right? Yes. That would be unprofessional. Yes. Yes. Right. It's just you know, uh, I don't like talking mm. when I. When I was employed at the university, uh, I had lectures in mm -hmm. English and I had to lecture about like 80 students uh, in economics in English. And it, it was really difficult experience for me because you had to speak for 80 minutes without any stops. Mm -hmm. And for someone who doesn't talk much, it's a lot to take. Well, but it was a good experience, I guess. It taught me a lot, and I built some confidence, I guess, uh, teaching broader audience. So, right. yeah. Right. So I really want to ask you a few more math-related questions. Yeah, sure. And, and, and you honestly strike me as someone who has more experience teaching math than you do teaching English, or am I wrong here? 
No, no, you're right. Uh, so I got the right idea. Yes, I used to teach uh, uh-huh. math in mm-hmm. Russian language. Uh-huh. And I think about a year I taught in Uzbek and then all, all the other uh, years of my experience, I taught math in Russian. And, so, curr- and, uh-huh. and currently it's in English. Yeah, no, actually I had uh, some uh, experience teaching math in English too at school, but it was uh, not purely in, ma- in English, but it was like kind of mix of Russian and English because students um, students had difficulties understanding math in English. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So for someone who's just getting started mm-hmm. uh, what do you what do you what, what, what do you recommend they do as an amateur math learner mm-hmm. so how do you how do how does someone who wants to get into math mm-hmm. and pursue it as a degree in mm-hmm. the future or do some math related career uh, okay. so how do they get off on the right foot foot with math well if you mean in terms of learning it yeah or yeah learning math uh, well it all comes down to basics, I mm-hmm. guess. So all you have to do is just familiarize yourself with basics, kind of like fractions mm-hmm. and decimals and uh, like calculus, simple calculus. And once you are done with it, you can go further and study geometry, right? And after that, like it, uh, there are several levels of math, like higher mathematics. So you can, yeah, you can go on with all the sections. But I guess like the simplest way is to start from calculus. I see. So uh, what are some learning tools? I mean, online learning tools, Mm -hmm. uh, math learners out there could use at their convenience. Um, So, or are you still old fashioned and use textbooks? No, there are a lot of courses that are, on offer, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, uh, what about like Coursera, mm-hmm. the platform? Uh, many famous universities offer very high quality courses there, mm-hmm. so you can use them. And uh, one of the best sources for uh, SAT preparation would be Khan Academy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and well, old old method would work too, I guess, like with uh, textbooks. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what's great about doing science subjects, mm-hmm. right? They practically never change. Yeah, yeah. And they're, yeah. All these concepts are set in stone, mm-hmm. whether you learn it from a textbook or mm-hmm. uh, online material. Mm-hmm. It, it's all the same, yes. right? Yes. Okay, and I'm just guessing when it's online, it's more interactive, right? You can engage in mm-hmm. uh, discussions on chat forums on the yeah. internet, ask people uh, questions if you have any mm-hmm. right so yes. the other time i had the podcast i i, I had parviz on the show mm-hmm. and he was basically talking about this different uh, group chats on the internet where mm-hmm. you can ask people math questions and mm-hmm. they will get back to you with solutions in mm-hmm. detail yeah right yes yeah. Uh, do you use any of these uh, online tools in the class mm-hmm. or do you encourage your students to look up their answers look up answers on the internet yes i do actually yes Mm -hmm. Uh, but the first option is to get back to me because i am like their main um um line of help yes yeah (laughs) first line of help yes i am their guide Uh so but apart from that uh, yeah i encourage them to use uh, ai Mm-hmm. programs like ChatGPT because it can help you with math too as long as you get the input correctly mm-hmm. and uh, yeah there are some forums um, on the internet you can ask questions and students try to come up with their own versions but I'm not sure whether all of them are correct uh-huh. because uh, yeah I have like r- several Russian uh, Russian websites mm-hmm. that I can recommend, uh, znania.ru, mm-hmm. I guess, are you. And um, yeah, Quora, you can mm-hmm. ask everything from Quora, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 
But in the, at the end of the day, you would need someone to confirm those answers anyway, right? Yes, because, you know, with math, uh, I think you need someone to explain why it is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Like, where did it come from? I mean, the solutions of the problems. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right, that's, that's pretty interesting. Now, so, uh, now I want to touch on teaching English as well. Right. Uh, would you like to share your experience of teaching English? Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you feel about, do you feel uh, as passionate about teaching English as you do teaching math? Yes. Yes. That's why I'm doing it. Uh -huh. Because, you know, um, knowing something and passing on mm -hmm. this information, this knowledge to um, further generation, I guess it's the best thing that you can do. And mm -hmm. with English, it's a little bit different because, um, I don't know why. Uh, no reason, no particular reason. <laughs> no, no, I yeah. like English. I, uh -huh. I like English, that's why I like teaching English, I guess. That's the only so reason. No particular reason. No, not, not really. I, I actually feel the same way. Like, I don't exactly know why I'm doing this. I just show up to work every morning and just yeah. carry on with my day. That's it. Yes. <laughs> so people out there, please don't ever ask me why I teach English, okay? Because I have no legit answer. Uh, and I feel you. I feel you. Thank you. Right. So, so what are your favorite things about teaching English? Or what do you particularly enjoy about it? Is there any aspect you like the most? Mm -hmm. uh, like, is it speaking? Is it reading? Yes. Or is it the fact that you get to interact with different students? Yes. Um, the, most, uh, the most interesting part mm -hmm. in teaching English for me is teaching reading. Because uh, we get to discuss different topics with students and I like how they come up with their own ideas and uh, it kind of mind-blowing and uh, eye-opening sometimes for me too because you get to see different perspectives on, mm -hmm. uh, on the same topic. Uh, what I mean is, for example, if we, uh, if students don't get um, one of, I mean, any, any questions, mm -hmm. We can discuss it and they can tell me their own perspective and mm -hmm. uh, we kind of exchange ideas mm -hmm. and yeah, it will help us to gain more insights yeah. from each other. Yeah, and I think that reading is the most important part in teaching every language, I guess, because uh, it helps you with grammar, it helps you with ideas, topic-related vocabulary. So, yeah, I, I really like teaching reading. I see. Yeah. A and do you have any pet peeves? Like anything you dislike about teaching English or math for that matter? Uh, right? No, not really. Uh -huh. Probably, uh, yeah. Probably it's speaking, I guess, because... <laughs> oh, that, that, that's, that, that's, that's surprising. Like, I wasn't Why? really expecting that. <laughs> no, you know, with speaking, you have to, you have to be um, multitasking because uh, you have to be really careful uh, by listening to the student mm -hmm. and taking notes at the same time and uh, thinking about your own ideas because if they don't have enough ideas, you mm -hmm. get to present your own, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I think it's a little bit challenging for me. Sometimes uh, they, you get a part three question and uh -huh. you have no clue, no ideas, and the entire class is staring at you. No, no, it's not about that. Do you ever that. find it's yourself in a situation like that? Because sometimes I do. Yeah, uh, sometimes, when, that, yeah, when it happens, it happens. Uh, what I... What I do is I just come clean and just tell everyone in the class that yeah. I, I got zero idea and just we go and look up ideas on the internet. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I tell students that I'm no chat GPT, I'm mm -hmm. no Google, I'm no encyclopedia, so yeah. I don't have all the answers. Yeah, exactly. but, but I'm sure there are teachers out there who find themselves uh, in a somewhat of a inconvenient, uncomfortable spot. Mm -hmm. Right when they get asked a question, part three question, they don't have ideas to, mm. right, yeah. and they think it's it's a shame, when in fact, it's not. It, yeah. it, it's not. It really not. It it, it really isn't. 
Yeah, so. I'm I'm getting comfortable with mm-hmm. being so vulnerable. Uh-huh. Yeah, in front of students because uh, I think it's really important that you instill in students that Mm -hmm. you are a person too and Mm -hmm. you make mistakes and you don't have to be perfect all the time Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah sometimes i can make some mistakes in math too Mm -hmm. like it happens like small slips Mm -hmm. and uh, and i told them that i I tell them that it's totally okay and uh, it happens sometimes so. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's not really about always having the right answer, but rather yes. about your will, desire to yeah. keep trying until of you course. get the right answer, mm-hmm. which yeah. matters more. Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, now uh, what do you say we uh, deviate from mm-hmm. this topic a little yes. and talk about uh, motherhood and teaching? Mm-hmm. So now... Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of teachers out there who would love to know what is it like being a mom and a full-time teacher. Mm-hmm. So how do you how do you juggle these tasks? How do you juggle these responsibilities? Well, I do my best mm-hmm. to uh, allocate some time for my children too. And mm-hmm. but uh, my career is really important mm-hmm. for me, so I try to keep a balance, mm-hmm. like everybody else, I guess. Yeah, motherhood motherhood is tough Mm -hmm. because uh, you get to be a parent without any instructions beforehand. Yeah. So it means that you have to learn on the way, right? Yeah, and it's really rewarding, um, however, I think, because, you know, um, your children give you motivation to get better each day and and, um, you are someone they look up to so you do your best to be a perfect example for them i guess Mm -hmm. right yeah and i'm also guessing you teach your own children uh, math and english Uh, and i'm I'm just picturing this home environment where you Mm -hmm. and your children speak english tajik no or russian russian right yes my yeah my older daughter is really interested in math herself i'm not Mm. I'm not one of those who like force their children to mm. learn something. Mm-hmm. She's curious herself and she comes up and uh, asks me some questions. Yeah, and I, I, I try to teach her too. So she's about to go to school next year mm. and she already knows how to calculate like two di- di- digit numbers. Oh. So yeah, That's here cool. I have yeah. to brag about a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that uh, if children are showing the signs of interest, mm-hmm. then you have to encourage it and mm-hmm. uh, you you should be more supportive of it and mm-hmm. try your best to teach your children too. Because uh, it's kind of like your job, Yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the reason why I'm asking this question, because mm-hmm. like, I wonder what my future life is going to be like, because I can't uh, really Im- imagine... It, being able to you know balance my you know mm-hmm. full-time job in mm-hmm. my family life mm-hmm. right the only reason why i can do all these things i'm doing is because i'm still a bachelor right yeah. and 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 going into this family life seems so daunting right <laughs> but yes. i know i'm gonna have to bite the bullet eventually yeah. and uh but and and, and the entire reason why I asked you this question is because mm-hmm. I want to kind of get your perspective on this, mm-hmm. right? It, yeah, and I can only imagine how hard it is to be a full-time mom and full-time mm-hmm. teacher. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is, it, it's no joke. It's no joke, right? And now another question I got, a mm-hmm. really interesting one here is, mm-hmm. uh, is your, I, I really want to know your take on this question here. Mm-hmm. Do you think teachers with their own children mom Mm -hmm. and dad teachers Mm -hmm. make better teachers than a lot of those young teachers out there like me who don't have their own kids Mm -hmm. so what you mean is Mm -hmm. is teaching uh, is teaching in genes no no no, what i'm asking is does being a mom or dad Mm -hmm. make you a better teacher than someone who doesn't have their own kids Oh, that's a very good question. It is. It is. Yes. It is. I think it helps you if you're a parent. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. 
because it teaches you how to be patient mm -hmm. yeah and uh, it gives you more perspective on how to guide through children and mm -hmm. you look at your students at your like as if they're your own children and well yeah because as a parent you have to like guide them through in all stages of their lives so this is the same with uh, teaching students, right? Yeah, it really helps, I guess, if you're a parent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you look at uh, you look at this on a different light. Yeah, I kind of feel like mom, dad, teachers. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, teachers with their own kids, mm -hmm. they tend to be more empathetic, like yes. you said. Yes. They are more patient. They know mm -hmm. how to connect with younger people mm -hmm. and the reason why i brought up this question is because i know in you know today's ielts space mm -hmm. there are a bunch of instructors out there who don't actually have their own kids and i feel like a lot of the time the reason why mm -hmm. uh, they have major misunderstandings problems in the classroom with their students simply because they're impatient mm -hmm. yeah right yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and for that reason actually i figured there are some schools out there with a strict policy, age policy. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get recruited as a teacher, you have mm -hmm. to be of certain age, yeah. like 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or ideally older. Mm -hmm. uh, that goes to show that there is this whole another dimension aspect to teaching, mm -hmm. which is, which which goes beyond just knowing your subject, mm -hmm. like being yes. able to connect with people, yeah. right? Showing empathy in the classroom and mm -hmm. understanding that learning takes time, mm -hmm. and that you know, yeah. trying to be at the same time, a good, great motivator, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. kids are so easy, so quick to give up. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. And and I figured there's no better person than you to ask you this question. Oh, thank you. Because yeah, you know, you're one of the few moms who work here. Yes. <laughs> right. And now, oh, I want to move on to a little more philosophical questions. Oh, I like, love that. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> Uh, how does it how does it feel to be 35 thank you I'm yeah <laughs> i'm so oh i didn't oh, i didn't know that i didn't know that i didn't know that my bad Thir so how does it feel to be 32 i just thought you are 10 years senior so i'm 32 32 yes ma'am how does it to be in your early thir 30s and the reason why i brought this up question is because uh, there is this new trend on TikTok and social media, right? Mm -hmm. YouTube, where people just go around and ask people, how does it to be their age? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me guess, they uh -huh. probably say it's hard, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, well, uh, it's good, I think. For me, uh, it's the phase where I know exactly what I want and I am settled down, I have my goals and I go towards them. And, you know, most of the time, uh, most people expect that when you are 30, you should just figure everything out in your life. But I think it's, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't depend on your age. It's just, well, yeah, maybe it is, depend it is dependent on uh, maturity level. But I guess... All, all of us are still work in progress and there is no like limit. So you should just try to improve yourself mm -hmm. each day, mm -hmm. bit by bit. Right. right. Yeah. Right. I mean, with me uh, being, you know, my age, I'm 24 now and I feel super scared about my future because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a quarter century old now, literally. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and... And time just slips by faster than I can blink. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. do you sometimes get that weird feeling and sensation that... Yeah, I do. Things just happen fast. Yes. Right. Yes, they do. Yes. But you know what? Uh, you should just look at the brighter side. So you're getting um, better. You're mm -hmm. getting more mature. And yeah, sometimes like there is a nagging um, onset of uh, like depressive thoughts, mm -hmm. like maybe you have 
missed on some opportunities in your life. So sometimes you go back and reflect on your past and you, and you think that uh, you had a lot of uh, opportunities, maybe you didn't use them correctly. or But uh, in the end, I think everything happens for a reason and um, you should be thankful for the experiences that you have, that you had and that you are still having. So I guess, yeah, you should just move on and uh, be excited about what's ahead of you, mm -hmm. right? So what would you tell, if you had a time machine and could go back in time, mm -hmm. what would you tell your 24-year-old self? Mm -hmm. um, well, <laughs> yes, good question. Um, I would probably say everything will be all right. Just, uh, it's going to pass. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And uh, you'll be all right, I would probably say. Because, you know... Uh, most of the time, you are faced with insecurities, and they get the best of you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the most important thing is just uh, the faith that everything will work out for you, right? Right, I see. And how about your 15-year-old self? Yeah, let's go mm -hmm. further back in time. Uh -huh, so yes. say you get to meet your 15-year-old uh -huh. self you so what would you tell that young girl young girl yes uh okay girl <laughs> men up <laughs> be more self-confident and uh just study study more mm -hmm. that's it yeah i would probably say study more yeah so you would probably give the same advice to all those 15-year-olds out there, your yes, students. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Because, you know, when, you're, uh, when you reach certain age um, and you have these very big ambitions, but mm -hmm. you don't have the opportunities to accomplish them. And it really upsets you, you know? Uh, so when you're young, you should get more experience, uh, more knowledge, as much as you can, I guess, right? And it's gonna, this investment of yours will pay off. Yeah. Definitely, right? So invest in yourself. In your time and yes. education, yes. right? Yes, yes. And you don't really wanna have this regret hanging over your head. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yes. I actually wanna drop a quote here. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably, I think you probably know this quote. And uh -huh. it goes, the pain of, Yes. Regret is worse than pain of, of discipline. Discipline. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. it, what that means is you'd rather be disciplined and suck it up. Yes. For a certain amount of time mm -hmm. until you make it. Yes. Than turn fifty and look back and mm -hmm. realize that you haven't accomplished much with your life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's what kind of you know wakes me up in the morning. Mm. <laughs> like I don't want to disappoint my sixty-year-old me. I don't want to disappoint my eighty-year-old me. Yes. Assuming I'll live up to be that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, good <laughs> right. for you. Right. And I, I'm guessing you've shared the same philosophy. I do. I do. Right. Yes. All right. Yeah, we kind of went deep into this topic, right? Uh, what do you say we talk about? Uh, you know, less serious topics like. Sure. Like your personal interests, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what do you find yourself doing these days when you're not teaching or being a mom? <laughs> <laughs> or do you, do you actually have so-called free time or? Uh, no, actually no. But uh -huh. I'm really passionate uh, about reading books. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love uh, this. Th this is a luxury for me now, mm -hmm. I guess. And uh, I like watching movies. So uh, I like dancing. I like singing. <laughs> I had no idea you liked dancing. You oh, do? I do. <laughs> okay. I do. <laughs> so, yes. All right. So books. Let's talk about books then. Yes. So what, what kinds of books do you read? Well, these days, mm -hmm. they are mostly right. self-help books, motivational stuff. And I used to... I used to read uh, literature, mm -hmm. English literature, and I really loved it. Oh, come on, give me a break. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I, uh, am I the only ignor ignorant guy who thinks uh, literature is complete waste of time? Because every time I see a student holding a literature book, I tell them to grab 
like a textbook that has actual practical application to everyday mm, life. No, it's, you know, it's a different kind of retreat from the reality. Uh-huh. Uh, because, you know, the quote, uh, the one who uh, doesn't read the book, doesn't read books mm-hmm. lives one life mm-hmm. and the one who reads books lives thousands mm-hmm. so it means that um well it really sparks your imagination and mm-hmm. it is really good i think and it can be seen as a as a relaxation right i guess right yeah <laughs> but i feel like when you get into you know reading literature mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you get too kind of lost in that world and sometimes mm-hmm. it's so hard to pull yourself back out mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. snap back to reality you can't every time i pick up a fiction book mm-hmm. or a book that is not about this world mm-hmm. right it takes me at least a few days <laughs> to get back right. to reality but right? isn't it amazing right uh, you get to experience mm-hmm. those uh, feelings that you n- you will probably never mm-hmm. uh, experience in your own life, right? Uh, but, but I feel like you miss out on a lot of useful practical skills. Like there's a clear trade-off, don't you think? Well, you uh-huh. can always balance them, right? Mm-hmm. You can always read uh, one fictional book and one non-fiction. Yeah, right, right, right. And yes. do you read one fiction and one non-fiction book? Uh, honestly, no. I started this Jane Eyre, uh-huh. and I can't finish it. <laughs> yeah, right. no. Uh, these days, uh, I, unfortunately, I can't get to uh, read a book. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I will. I will do my best to finish it. Right. Yeah. All right. So, well, what's your all-time favorite book? If there was one book you could pick and read it for the rest of your life. Uh, I repeat. think I think life is too precious to spend it on, on reading right. like one book multiple times. Right. But was there, there are a- so much, so many books uh-huh. that are interesting, and you can read them. So, was there yeah. any book in your life that had a deep, profound impact on you? Yes, yes, and there are several, I guess. But I can uh, mention Martin Eden mm-hmm. by Jack London. Okay. It really, it was really soul stirring for mm-hmm. me, and it really gave me different perspectives on the hardships that a human uh, can un- overcome. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Martin Eden. Um, yeah, and probably. No, no, I can't recall this name. All right, never mind green. then. Something green. Okay. R- what do you mean, Robert Green? No, 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 no. no 40, Robert for, Green, 40, 33, 33, loss. 40, 48, no. I don't know. Uh, there are a bunch, no, 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 of, no, bunch no. of rules no, there about how to become. No, no. Okay, all right, never mind then. We can just skip. Yes, yes, please. Right. <laughs> sure. And I also figured you've, mm-hmm. uh, you're into listening to podcasts i do right? yes i do listen to podcasts every day it's like a whole ritual for me sacred ritual so what time of the day do you listen to podcasts in the morning of uh-huh. course yeah i try to do some exercises physical exercises mm-hmm. and try to engage in um like uh, listening to podcasts too while i am doing exercise so yeah and you know what i actually had this ritual too every day I, every morning i'd wake up i would mm-hmm. uh, put on my headphones and listen to a podcast mm-hmm. while i went about my morning routine mm-hmm. but i r- kind of realized it it was too heavy early in the day mm, you see yeah. too much wisdom and, and knowledge <laughs> well i so i actually tweaked my daily routine a little now mm-hmm. uh, i'm only listening to podcasts right before i go to bed mm, then nice. listen to it in the morning mm-hmm. right and, and and because I, I so there was this time not long ago I realized because of this, my morning ritual, I was kind of slow at work when I'd show up because I'd still be in their world. I'd still be thinking about their points. I'd still be, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of going back and forth on what they said and processing that information. Oh, yeah. It doesn't happen with me, though. 
Yeah. Uh, it means that like uh, I listen to it, I experience all this uh, like drama, mm-hmm. and then once I'm uh, in the classroom, like I'm okay. Like right. I get yes, I get on with my classes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like I I envy you for that, like being able to just show up and put on your teacher hat. Yeah, and yeah, move on like you're having a normal day. Yes. Yeah, but but with me, like when I listen to a podcast, it kind of sets the tone for the day. Mm. So if it's a it's if it's a podcast on say something deep, mm. then I'm gonna have like a black and white day, mm. <laughs> like those movies you you yeah. see, right? See. But yeah. if it's this podcast about Uh, motivation, positivity, mm-hmm. overcoming challenges, right? Some Jocko mm-hmm. Willing podcast or mm-hmm. David Goggins podcast. Mm. I'm super excited about my day, mm. right? I see. Right. So I, 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 I kind of feel like YouTube really dictates how my day goes. Mm. So no, it YouTube, never happens to I'll me. I'll go with them. So yeah, yeah. right now. Oh, we're done with pod. So, what's one podcast you particularly enjoy listening to, or is there any channel you'd recommend to people out there? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, my all-time favorite is the Diary of a CEO mm-hmm. with Stephen Bar- Barlett. Oh yeah, I love that one. I actually yes, did. yes, and uh, I like the variety of guests he mm-hmm. has, and the different topics that they cover, discover, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, sometimes it's really um uh, it's sometimes it's really sad sometimes it's really motivational uh, and um, perspective shifting mm-hmm. so yeah I, i really like this podcast so and do you have any favorites i told you my favorite no i mean i mean i meant to like one episode in particular a favorite guest uh no no i find I find something useful in each episode, so I, I can't pick one. Mm-hmm. What I like about uh, this podcast is that they discuss different topics. Uh, they range from like physical health, or physical conditions, health, uh, to more philosophical ones. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I am interested in all of them, I guess. So I can't pick one episode. Exactly, and apart from the diary of a CEO, uh, I like to listen to uh, Curiosity Daily. It's it's not a long podcast, but what I like about it is that they discuss scientific topics uh, and discoveries, and they deliver it in a very interesting way. Uh, they correct some jokes. Mm-hmm. I like their jokes <laughs> the most, right? right. And yeah. Uh, and you know what? I noticed that when I listen to those podcasts, I get some ideas for my speaking, for example, for writing essays. And sometimes the topics that they they cover there in the podcast they coincide with uh, reading passages, literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Right. So for someone wanting to develop a well-rounded perspective mm-hmm. go and watch the diary of ceo yeah and for nerds out there <laughs> go and yes. watch curiosity daily daily podcast mm-hmm. right yes uh, and with that the uh, diary of ceo mm-hmm. my all-time favorite episode of his is the one where he uh, brings uh, the one where he has uh, the founder of gymshark as a guest Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you watched that one. Mm, found, I don't recall found it. Found a really young guy. He's actually uh, one of the four uh, billionaires in the world who's mm. in their early 20s. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And that one just blew my mind. Mm, I should definitely uh, check give it. Give it a watch. Yes. yes. Please, guys, do add this one to your watch list, okay? Because mm-hmm. this guy is so mm-hmm. young and, 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 and so ambitious and so driven. Mm-hmm. And w- there's this part where he gets asked... Like, how, what does it feel to be uh, one of the youngest billionaires in the world? Mm-hmm. And his response was just, it was mind-blowing. Mm-hmm. And he basically said, uh, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Mm-hmm. Like he said, to me I it guess. means nothing. Mm-hmm. Like imagine yes. being a billionaire mm-hmm. and just shrugging it, shrugging it off as nothing. Right? Yeah. He just like 
kids Th that's that, that was cool that was yeah. so dope yeah <laughs> that kid knows something yeah yeah yeah, yes. yeah you should go totally go and watch it guys yes. all right i also know one other personal interest you got is blogging mm -hmm. like i there's nothing i enjoy more than reading your late night posts oh thanks Thanks. So, That's like, nice. so what got you into vlogging? Like, w blogging. Why did you start blogging, writing those little posts? Well, you know, um, I used to keep a diary, mm -hmm. and I really like writing. It helps you to get all those uh, mm -hmm. nagging uh, thoughts mm -hmm. out of your mind. Mm -hmm. And then, um, actually, it was you uh, who prompted me to share the things that I know. Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean is, I remember you telling me that uh, knowledge is nothing if you if people can't benefit from it. So then I decided that uh, it made sense, mm -hmm. and I should probably like share uh, the things that I know that maybe could be helpful for people out there. So th th that's the reason why I started blogging, and really, uh, I don't know. It's just nice to share your thoughts and to get uh, feedback mm -hmm. like from people well yeah can I, I ask like you it. something hmm? can yeah. I ask you something yes. so why does that feedback matter mm, no it doesn't mm -hmm. really I'm sorry if I hurt anyone's feelings mm -hmm. uh, n no uh, what I, I mean I is mean, I don't mean comments I mm. mean kind of feedback because because I, I write essays and mm -hmm and personal blog mm -hmm. for practically, practically the same reason, mm -hmm. for that feedback, right? Uh, no, by feedback, I meant like uh, there, there are some people who reached out to me mm -hmm. saying that my posts uh, were insightful mm -hmm. and they really liked it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying like uh, if they enjoy reading mm -hmm. them, so why not doing it? Oh, yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, right. Good point. Yes. So, and something else I am curious to ask is mm -hmm. to write blogs on such level with the correct word, the correct mm -hmm. grammar, and mm -hmm. the, you know, you need to be in a state of clarity mental yeah. clarity mm -hmm. like a lot of mental clarity like people yes. have no idea how hard it is to write a good piece of essay mm -hmm. people have no idea how hard it is to have these podcasts yes where you are dialed in mm -hmm. and you come up with the right combination of words at the right time yeah. and match that with the right reaction mm -hmm. so how do you uh, maintain how do you achieve that mental clarity um like what, i can't what, what, say what, that what are your biohacks do you have mm -hmm. any biohacks hacks yeah well i can't say that all of my posts are flawless uh, no they are not but i try my best to proofread them mm -hmm. and uh, try to make sure that uh, they're error free mm -hmm. but when it comes to hacks i don't know maybe like how do you like, get into that headspace where ideas just pop Pop yeah, I head. actually don't post if I have nothing to say. Mm -hmm. I, I can't make myself. It's just I have to have this inspiration mm -hmm. to and write anything. Where does that inspiration come from? Uh, well, my daily interactions. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes it can be a phrase that mm -hmm. someone told me. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be like a thing I read. I I, I read on the book. Yes, and. Or, I don't know, it can be just spontaneous stuff. And it prompts me to write something, to develop my ideas and then write something. And does it have anything to do with the moment of reflection you have every now and then? Yes, right. I reflect on my day every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like how cliche it sounds. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Actually, those posts are just a reflection posts yeah i kind of because i kind of feel like a lot of people out there just go about their day and do very little reflection they're so mm. caught up in their work mm. or their studies mm -hmm. that uh, they're not mindful at all they're not in the moment yeah they don't they feel like they're 
not in control, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like someone else is in control yeah. and just getting pushed around, pushed in all directions. Mm -hmm. And and what I do is when I find myself in that spot, mm -hmm. kind of pause, take a step back yeah. and have a moment of reflection, like just sit and think, mm -hmm. sit and think, but not too long though, guys. <laughs> all right, keys, you're going to get lost right. in your head. Not yes. for too long, for mm -hmm. like five, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. you know, people yeah. might think of it as a form of meditation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it it's such a game changer, Yes. right? And, and, and instantly I get all these ideas and insights out of nowhere, like someone is yeah. in my head and whispering those mm -hmm. points to me. Exactly. Like, and I'm borrowing those ideas from all these different, you know, parts mm -hmm. of my uh, brain. And I don't know how they uh, mm -hmm. pop up. And, and, and I actually get asked this question a lot in the comment section. People, mm. when I post essays, where do you get those ideas? Do you ever read or watch? Yeah, I do all those things for maintenance. Mm -hmm. But while I'm writing essays or having this podcast with you, all these questions that, that I come up with, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's another guy in my head and kind of whispering those things to me mm -hmm. and to reach that level of you know creativity and mental clarity mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i need to be doing this uh, reflection sort of reflection meditation every now and then yeah right what's yeah. interesting is sometimes it hits in a very inconvenient time <laughs> and what i do is just take notes in my phone okay i should not forget about this oh yeah yeah oh, i do it th th that happens to me too sometimes yeah. like i wake up in the morning mm -hmm. right uh when i'm in the shower <laughs> i get my best ideas when i'm in the shower yeah that's <laughs> why they're they're called <laughs> shower thoughts right uh, yeah. yes <laughs> right and, and sometimes when i'm teaching a class idea pops in my mind mm. instantly i go on my saved messages yeah boom, yeah i saved. do that too all right i need mm. and i'll go back to it later mm -hmm. and then it's sometimes a podcast idea mm -hmm. it's sometimes something about the school yeah. and and the different policies we have here mm -hmm. all these you know things we've figured out along the way mm -hmm. I th a lot of it was actually uh, the product of uh, just reflection and sitting mm -hmm. and thinking right yeah. right I mean, people mm -hmm. can actually accomplish a lot by just having a moment of reflection yes right and yes. sort their thoughts out or whatnot mm -hmm. right and uh, you said you do a little bit of exercise, right? Yeah, so, I do. So uh, how long have you been doing this for? Uh, about a year, I uh -huh. guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I figured that I need to do this. So w what kind of exercise do you specifically do? Like, what's your workout regime mm -hmm. like? Because I had Mr. Parviz on the show. He's into mm -hmm. powerlifting. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's just... I'm uh, guessing you're not a powerlifter, are you? No, <laughs> no, no. No, you're not. No. I pay attention to my posture uh -huh. most of the time, so I want to concentrate on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, th yeah. Uh, so, w w what kind of exercise do you exactly do to improve your posture? Mm, just... Uh-huh. So okay. is it like you? Is it like you look up videos on the internet and just yeah. repeat yes. their routine? Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's actually so important, like to do exercise in a day, especially for your posture. That's really yeah. good. You brought this up because yes. I, I what I've what I've noticed is when I you know teach students is mm -hmm. a lot of the times when they feel sluggish mm -hmm. or disoriented mm -hmm. right and groggy it's because of their posture the yes. other day i was having a speaking class with one of my groups and a student he was kind of rushing his thoughts and speaking fast and breathing heavily and and i just stood there and said okay you, stop all right something's wrong here mm -hmm. right and instantly told him, okay, we need to fix your posture first because he mm. was kind of caved in and sitting like this, mm -hmm. right? And yes. that kind of puts too much tension on your lungs. Yes. And so what I told him instantly was, all right, you need to stand, sit upright, mm -hmm. sit upright. Mm -hmm. All right. And, 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 and that not just gives you a confidence boost, but also makes you, you know, just generally feel better, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And, and this is one and two is, when you sit a lot, apparently research shows that muscles around your neck stiffen. They get pretty tight. Mm -hmm. And when they do get tight, they block oxygen to yeah. your brain. Bl blood flow, right? Yeah, blood mm -hmm. flow, right? Yes. And when your 
brain is not getting that oxygen mm-hmm. blood flow, yeah. you're obviously going to suffocate. Yes. Right. Yeah. And this is the entire reason why sometimes just sitting in the class and for no reason I just start stretching my neck yeah. or just walking around the room. Yeah. Yeah. And get that little bit of exercise. Yeah. I do right. that too when I'm asking uh-huh. Volker in oh, <laughs> reading yeah. classes. And, and all, all students think we're some weirdos. <laughs> no, not really. They're used to it. Uh, they are, right? Yes. Yeah. But if it's their you know, first time getting mm, a class, yeah. they think that, that something serious is wrong with you. Yes. You should go and see a doctor or something. Yeah, yeah right. All right. We went a lot of stuff today, mm-hmm. over a lot of stuff today, Miss mm-hmm. Markabo. I really appreciate you coming Thank on the you. show and sharing with our audience all your insights, Thank stories. You. Mm-hmm. It was so much fun, right? And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it was it was an honor to have you here on the podcast today. Thank you. So. Thank you for giving me to share my stories with you. It was an honor to be here. Thank you so As well. much. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the episode, please don't forget to like our content and subscribe and leave us some comments, okay? I'll see you in the next one. Peace.